Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good and his mercy endure forever. Welcome to Abiding Faith Christian Center Sunday morning worship. Pastor Rodney and I are so delighted that you decide to join with us on today. Our mission is establishing, empowering, and maturing lives to fulfill God's divine purpose. Our vision is through the teaching and preaching of the word, we will reach the lost, bring restoration to backsliders, give hope to the hopeless, and minister healing to the afflicted. We will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will bring believers, and when I say we will bring believers, that means that we all will bring believers to spiritual maturity, enabling them to impact this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Abiding Faith Christian Center is located at G3237 uh, Beecher Road, that's Suite F, right near the Happy Elephant Daycare Center, Flint, Michigan, 48532. Come on out to our services on Saturday. We have noon prayer, Sunday Bible class at 10 a.m., Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. And then we have our Thursday Bible study, one hour in the Word of God. Everyone is welcome to our services. Well, if you are ready to receive the Word of God on today, go ahead, grab your Bibles, your electronic gadgets, or however you access the Word of God. And those that are watching on Facebook Live, be uh, remember to hit that share button so that others can share in the Word of God on today. So let's receive our pastor, Pastor Rodney Hamer. Well, praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Can you say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, uh, well, welcome those of you on Facebook Live to Abiding Faith Christian Center's Sunday morning service, as well as those members of Abiding Faith Christian Center, also family members are watching this from afar. We thank you for tuning in with us and supporting us here at Abiding Faith Christian Center. Uh, your support is indeed welcome and it's also needed. So praise God, continue to do what you're doing because it's well pleasing in the sight of God and you will receive the results of your seed sown into good ground in the future and in the present. Praise God. Can you say amen? Well, you know I am all at Biting Faith Christian Center. We like to pray. We do pray. We don't only like to pray. We pray because we pray on purpose. Amen? Yes. We pray on purpose. You know, I hear some people sometimes when they get ready to pray, say, well, uh, let's uh, pray a quick prayer and stuff. You know, and I say, well, I don't think kind of like that. We say, let's pray a quick prayer because it's not just praying a quick prayer. It's praying on purpose for something so that the, uh, circumstances or situation can change or something that can, can happen. Amen? And we're bringing God in on the scene, praise God. So we need to think about prayer more than just you know, a magic wand that you just you know, wave around or a magician's hat that you stick your hand in and pull something out and say, abracadabra! You know, it don't work like that. Amen? And those things are not real. But prayer is real, praise God. And God hears the prayers of the righteous, doesn't he? Yes. Amen. And you are the righteous, aren't you? You sure is. Amen. You are the righteous of God in Christ. And so when you pray, God hears you. His eyes are over the righteous and his ears are always open unto your prayers. But he only answers the prayers that's prayed according to his will, which is his word. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I said, let's pray. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace this morning. We thank you for the greater one that's on the inside of us. He's the one that's you sent into this world to lead and guide us into the truth. And Father, your word is the truth. And so we expect him to do just that. He will lead and guide us into the truth. He will give illumination to our minds and understanding to our hearts by manifesting the spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge of you and the Lord Jesus Christ so that grace and peace can be multiplied unto you, unto us. Grace and peace multiplied. Oh yes, Father, according to your divine power which you have given unto us through the exceeding great and precious promises in your word, so that we might become partakers of the divine nature that's on the inside of us, having escaped the corruption that's in this world through the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of this life. We thank you for this this morning. 
We expect for this to come to pass because you said it in your word. We receive the engrafted word not as the words of a mere man, but as it is in truth, your word which will effectively work within us because we receive it, because we believe it. Thank you for manifesting yourselves this morning through the signs and wonders of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for it because we desire for your glory to be manifested this morning. So that yokes can be destroyed, burdens can be removed. Oh yes, Father. Ah, yes. And the faith of the people would not rest in the wisdom of man's words, but in power and demonstration of your spirit so that you can be glorified. Now, Father, I pray for them and I pray for myself that you would give me utterance. As I open my mouth, I'll speak boldly as I ought to speak. And making known the mysteries of this gospel unto them that are here and those that are viewing online and those that will be viewing in the future. I thank you for doing it because I'm asking that which is according to your will. So I thank you for doing it. And I ask you to do it in the name of Jesus. And everyone that agrees, let him say amen. amen. And amen. amen. All right, well, praise the Lord. Raise your Bible up in the air like you just don't care so you can prepare your parts to receive God's word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say with me now, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is God's word that tells me that my faith is only limited by the word inside of me. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today I will hear his word. I will believe his word. Word. I will believe his word. And I will act upon his word. And I will act upon his word. Therefore, through my faith, through my faith I, will pursue. I will pursue. I will overcome. I will overcome. And I'll recover all, I'll recover all that, the that the devil stole from me. Today, Today my, life my life shall never be the same. Never be the same because of God's words. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That was so, so, uh, so powerful. I heard thunder just a minute ago. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So, Pastor, you just hearing stuff. Okay. Let me hear it then. <laughs> well, praise God. Continuing on the series that we've been teaching on called uh, Transforming Forming Your Life to the Image of Christ foundational scripture of course is Romans the 8th chapter verse number 29 where the apostle Paul under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit writes to the believers in Rome but is also written to us because all scripture that are written in the Bible from the book of generations to the revolutions was inspired by the Spirit of God can you say amen no. huh no. oh no what Oh, not revolutions, not gen not generations. Of oh, from Genesis to the book of Revelations. Amen. I'm just seeing if y'all hear, hear me or not. Sometimes I say that folks be saying, Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, Romans 8, 29, which was inspired by the Spirit of God, is written to us so that God can give us instructions in righteousness. And the Apostle Paul writes to us, and he says in this particular verse of Scripture, he says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed, to be conformed. So the reason he says to be conformed, because there is a, there is a, there is a time in our lives that we have not become conformed conform and that part, point is at the time that we become born again because when we become born again you're born as a baby a baby Christian a baby a baby or a, a baby of God amen God's baby I mean because God's your father you're begotten of the father and so from that point on from a baby Christian you have to come to the you go to the process of becoming conformed the process is a method for doing a certain thing which generally requires a number of steps that must must be taken to arrive at the same results that everybody else has arrived there because God is not a respecter of person the same 
the same requirement he has on one he has on the other no matter who it is. Amen? God is always consistent. Truth is always consistent. So he says, for whom he did for no, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he, the son, might be the firstborn among many brethren and sister and, you know, what have you. Amen? The word brethren, just using that word, but it's talking about brothers and sisters. Praise God. Amen? So, we are to be conformed to the Lord Jesus Christ, and we find Found out that one of the ways to be conformed according to God's word is by the confession of our mouth. And fun fact, in fact, is one of the most important ways for us to be conformed to the image of God's Son is by the confession of our mouth. Now, when we become born again, we become partakers of the nature of God. We become one with God and one with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. When we are born into the kingdom of God, we're born into the body of Christ, and we are one with Christ, and we are Christ's representatives on the earth. But we have to get to go through the transformation of the mind, of our thinking, of our mental, uh, mental capacity, or mental, you know, Minds, praise God. I was trying to find another word, but what is? We have to get that mind renewed. The way you think. The, the, way, the way you calculate and evaluate, evaluate things in this world and this life and circumstance and situation that you're confronted with and that you're facing. You have, to read, you have to renew your mind so you can learn how to recalculate it based upon the truth. And the God's word is the truth. That's why Jesus said in John 17, 17, he said, Father, sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is true. The truth. His word is the truth. And the truth is always consistent. So we have to go through the teaching of the word. We have to teach the word because that's where the truth is lies. It lies in God's holy word. And so we found out in the book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 6, that the Apostle Paul, again, writing to the Philemon church, praise God, uh, he writes and stuff, he says, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Now, the New King James says it this way, that the communication of your faith may become effective by the acknowledging acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So the word effectual means effective. And when something is effective, that means that it's bringing about a result. Right. Right. Amen? If you, were to, if you were to take a certain medicine and stuff because of a certain you know, a body condition and you took that, me that medicine, that medicine is intended to bring about an effect. What do you mean by that? It's, it's, it's created to help the body in its recovery of the abnormal condition of the body, which they call sickness. Right? And that medicine is supposed to bring about a change to bring the body back into the place where it's supposed to be, where it was originally. So that means that medicine is, is having an effect upon you. Well, the Word of God is supposed to have an effect upon you. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. The communication of your faith. The communication of your faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? Faith doesn't come by football games, basketball games. Faith doesn't come by as the world turns or the edge of night. Faith doesn't come by um, Wakanda forever. Faith doesn't come by, you know, any other thing out there. Faith only comes, the faith that the believer is supposed to live by, because the Bible says the just should live by faith. To live is a 24-hour ordeal. It's not just talking about for 8 hours, 10 hours a day, when you get off work, and then you lay down and go to sleep, and you're no longer living. It's not until you wake up at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, whatever time you wake up in the morning. And when you wake up, then you start living again. Well, no, that's not the case because if, you don't, if you're not living while you're laying down there sleeping, then you ain't waking up in the morning. You're dead. You're gone. Amen? So that means the just shall live by faith. So living by faith is living by the word. So the word of God, which comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when he says in, in the book of Philmon, he said that the communication of your faith. 
will become effective. The communication of your word, the word, the communication of the word will become effective in your life. Communicate means to speak it out of your mouth. Or you can do sign language, that's true too. But we're talking about those who speak with the mouth and even sign language people, they can do it with sign language, making confessions. It causes the word to become effective in your life. You have to communicate it. We said that Christianity is a great confession. Because we found out that the way you get into the kingdom is by the confession of your mouth of what you believe in your heart. Even Romans 10, 13, and 14 it says, Whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then it says, How shall they call upon him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear except someone preach? Amen. So here again, there's a confession that comes. How can they call upon him? Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord. Even Romans, uh, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave you power. It's a communication of receiving. Verbally. Amen. Okay, so we went through and we talked about what do we confess? What do we confess? The Bible says in Acts, the 17th chapter, verse number 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. In him who? In him God. In God we live, we move, and we have our very existence upon the earth because we are now one with the Heavenly Father. One scripture says, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your spirit with your soul and your physical body. Glorify him. How do you glorify God? You glorify God according to his word. Jesus said, He that keepeth my commandment, he, he it is that loveth me. Amen? You glorify God by your Loving him through your acting on the word of God. Being doers of the word. Now that's where the God set up the kingdom. And it's written in the word. And all I'm doing is just giving you the word. So that you know how God wants things to be done in your life individually. And how he wants things to be done in our lives collectively as a church. Here at local church abiding faith Christian center. It's through the instructions of God's word. All of this in here is not just for religious purpose. It's not because he wants us to develop, you know, man-made customs. He wants us to live the life so that our light can shine before the world. So that our lives can be different from what the world's world is. When Jesus was on the earth, the Bible says, Behold, John the Baptist said to Jesus, he said, Behold, the light, the Lamb of, uh, the, uh, uh, the, behold, the Lamb of God. Which come to take note, he said, Behold, the light of the world. No, Jesus, I am the light of the world. I think Jesus said that. That's the scripture I'm trying to think of. And then he, one time he said, You are the light of the world. A candle that is not to be put, put up under the table, but to be set upon a hill. Why? So they can shine in darkness far away, can see the light, and they can start being drawn to the light. That's who we are. Can you say amen? So, we find out that Christianity is the great confession. We get into the body of Christ through the confession of our mouth. That's how we start off. We looked at David and he had a confession. Then we started talking about what do we confess. And when I say it again, I said, for we in him we live and move and have our being. We do live and move and have our being. Ephesians 2.10 2, says it this way. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. I should have read that first. It will have saved me a whole lot of other words. I just got them speaking. Amen. In fact, turn to Ephesians and chapter 2 and look at verse number 10. I mean, it just, it just sums it up in a, in a, in a nutshell. Sometimes we be elaborating and stuff, and all we got to do is just read the scripture. And you just say it flat out. Amen. Amen. Just as clear as day. That's what light does. The inches of his word give it light. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. You found this, amen? amen? Okay, and if you're getting there, you get there. 
Ephesians 2.10, let's read it out loud together, those that have you. Ready, go. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. And we were created for what? Good works, not bad works. Amen? So we're talking about being transformed are being conformed to the image of his son. Because when Jesus was on the earth, Acts 10.38 says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Those are the good works. He went about doing good. He's a good, good Lord. He's a good, good Savior. Amen? We like that song. He's a good, good Father. Who you are. It's who you are. Boy, I like singing that song. Sometimes I get crying when I sing that song. I don't turn around so anybody else can see me, but I'll be crying singing that song. You're such a good, good Father. I just get all emotional because he's so good. I don't know about you, but I know he's good to me. Is he good to you? Is he good to you? Listen, he is good to you whether you know it or not because the Bible says he make his son to the, the shine upon the good as well as the wicked. Did you know that? God is good to the, he's good to the good and is good to the wicked. I mean, when the sun comes out and the rain comes down and waters the earth and make it bring forth the bud so there be food for the eater, God calls that. God watches over that. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from the Father above, of whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Good. Goodness comes from God. Everything evil comes from the devil. That which steals, kills, and destroys doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. So don't ever get it mistaken. Don't ever mistake the works of Satan for the works of God. You don't know, like catastrophic situations, hurricanes coming through and destroying all of the places there in, in, in Florida. That wasn't no act of God. Oh, God is just showing forth his anger because of what they're doing down there in Florida. He's just trying to get them wicked sinners. But what about the Christians that got affected by it? It can't be God. No, that's the devil because he don't care about nobody, nothing and nobody. He don't care about his own children. Because anybody who's not born again, Satan is your father. Yes. He don't care about his own children, and much less, he hates the Christian because right. you represent God. Right. And he's an enemy of God. And he's your enemy too. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. Isn't this good teaching, Gary? Good word, huh? Comes from the Bible. Ain't my words, ain't me. I can't no, take no credit for it. I'm just a messenger boy. But listen, let's get on forward here. Now, so we, we talked last week, we talked about what do we confess. We do confess we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus. We found in the book of Revelations 12, 11, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. In fact, I, got you to I have to have you read Revelations 12, 11, Revelations 12, chapter 12. Revelation is the last book in the Bible, so turn to the last book in the Bible, which will be the book of Revelations, and find chapter 12, and then look at verse number 11. And you're going to see in that particular verse of scripture what God calls, what God says causes us to overcome in this, 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 this demonic devil controlled world. The world is controlled by Satan and his demonic forces. The world is. I said the world. I didn't say Christians. I said the world. Christians are not supposed to be. But they can be taken captive by Satan if they don't acknowledge the truth. They don't walk in the light of the truth. And then they can always recover themselves by acknowledging it and decide, say, Father, forgive me. I'm going down the wrong path and I ask you to forgive me and make a decision to walk down the truth. But the world is controlled by Satan. So here in the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse number 11, if you're there, say amen. If you're not, say, oh, me with me because I hadn't turned there yet and I need to turn. I can quote it off by memory, but shoot, you know, I need to look at it just like you. All right, Romans, the 12th chapter, what verse did I say? 11, 12, 11. Okay, I'm in chapter 12. Now I got to find 11. I founded it. 
Okay, let's read that out loud together. Ready, go. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame, overcame. They overcame. They were victorious. They won the battle. They put down the opposition. They tore down the walls of opposition by the blood of the Lamb. The blood. Oh, but the blood. What can make me whole but the blood of Jesus? Washed in the blood, cleansed I am. Oh, thank God for the blood that made me a new man. Ooh, that just came out of my spirit. That's called an ode or a psalm. You know, the Bible talks about singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Amen. Look at that. He says, and they, say they, they. means me. Means me. Say I'm a they. I'm a they. I overcome. I overcome. By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of my testimony. And the word of my testimony. And I love not my life. And I love not my life. On this earth. On this earth. Even unto death. Even even if I have to die for Christ's sake. Amen. I have to die for Christ's sake. Okay, I almost thought I got a little hesitation there, you know. <laughs> but it came out. Praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Your confession, what you say with your mouth from your heart, is vitally important whether you're going to overcome in this world or not. Our confessions are an affirmation of who and what we are in and through Christ Jesus. It is our continual confession of God's word over our lives and the circumstances that brings us into the victory that God has predestined for, our, for us to live in. The act of our confession creates within our mind thoughts, ideas or images therefore creating how we think or see ourselves this can be defined as our self image we talked about the tw tw the 12 spies and the 10 of the 12 spies who created a ne negative images of defeat and failure in their lives in the book of Numbers, the 13th chapter, and Numbers 14 chapter. They created an image of defeat and failure in their hearts as well as the people who listened and heard them. That's why Jesus says, take heed what you hear. So you, you, you have to watch, you know, who you listen to. I hear believers talk about, you know, how they, you know, listen to this and, you know, on, on, on the internet or the TV and they have this certain men or women get on there and, you know, preachers. But not all preachers have revelation knowledge of the truth. That doesn't say they're not Christians. It doesn't say they're bad people. They just don't have a revelation knowledge of the truth. In fact, in the book of Acts, it talks about one time when the apostle Peter, who had came from Jerusalem and came among the Gentiles who were non-Jews, and he was fellowship with them and he preached to them the gospel. And then all of a sudden, the Jews from Jerusalem, these Pharisees and Sadducees, religious folks, came to this town where Peter and Barnabas and other disciples were, apostles were. And Peter then, when they came, they withdrew themselves from the, from the Gentiles. Now before the Jews came, they were there and they hung out with them. They sat down and had food with them and ate with them. But when the Jews came, they withdrew themselves. And now they want to tell the Gentiles, well, you got to come over here and act like the Jews and stuff. And you got to wash your hands and, and do all this stuff like this and stuff. Now before they came, they just did everything like the, Jew, like the Gentiles did. So Paul had to confront Peter. He had to say, you are wrong. You and Barnabas and the rest of y'all. 
He said, because Jesus, he says, if you try to live after the laws and the commandments, then you're going contrary to what Jesus came to. He, because he came, he came to undo the old covenant and brought in the new covenant. That's not to say that we don't keep the Old Testament commandments, because we keep the commandment of love, which all of that hangs on. But we don't do it through the washing the hands and all those customs that they brought in. And so he had to contend with because Peter, listen, Peter didn't know. But he was an apostle. So it's possible for to be a preacher and not know. That's why you got to take heed what you hear. Amen. Are you listening? Everybody doesn't have the full revelation. They have some. They know salvation. That's great. But there's some revelation, like the confession of your mouth. Is it important what you say with your mouth? The book of Proverbs 18 chapter, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now what is true? Them are the words. The word is. Jesus says, take heed what you, he said, every idle word that a man speaketh out of his mouth, he shall give account of in the last days. If by your mouth you shall be condemned, or by your mouth, the words of your mouth tell you be justified. Jesus said it when he was on the earth. So we find out. He says in Mark eleven twenty three, whosoever shall say and shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He will have whatsoever he saith. That is either what you say that's negative or what you say that's positive. If you speak positive, if you speak about what you are in Christ and what where you are in Christ, then you're going to have those things manifested. Right. If you confess, I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. Or say, I'm just... An old sinner saved by grace. I don't know. I am so weak. I don't know if I can make it. I'm just only human. Oh, I'm telling you the struggles of life. I just don't know if I can overcome this. I'm telling you the devil is just, ru the devil is just running after me. He's just been attacking me all day long and stuff. And, oh, I just got to pray my Lord, my strength in the Lord. Lord, help me, help me, Lord. And you're making that confession. I mean, it sounds funny, but people do that. And that's why they're defeated. They're always talking about, I don't have enough. I don't know if I'm making a knot and stuff, you know. And, oh, the economy is just turning bad and stuff and I don't know I don't know if we're going to be able to make it or not so you're saying that what you are your mouth what you believe in your heart and it comes to pass and you don't know it because you've never been taught it right, or you may have been taught it but you don't want to receive it you want to stick to what everybody else is saying you, you want people to accept you especially when you get around in the group of them right. when you get around them and they talk in that way I don't want to be different I don't want think them. I don't want them thinking I'm strange. Yeah, you should be that way, because when you down there sinking, don't sinking, and you going down there, uh, 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 all all the way down level to the ground, what are they going? What are they going to say? Oh, isn't that, isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? I'm so. Oh, isn't that a shame? Sister song. Oh, look at brother song. So, oh, isn't that a shame? That's all they going to say. Are you hearing me? Okay, so let's get back to the word. The Holy Spirit had me go down the direction. That's not my notes, praise God. I can show you, but let's go forward. Praise the Lord. He wants to get this over to us. Us. When Jesus was on the earth, unbeknownst to many, but this comes from the study of the scriptures. Of course, you know, God has, has called me as a pastor and a teacher. And um, he is, I saw these things in the scripture that Jesus continually made confessions of where he was from and who he was when he was on the earth. Jesus overcame when he was on the earth because of the confession of his mouth, what he believed and what he confessed. Now, one of the reasons I know that because when Jesus came to the earth and he was born of the virgin, he was born as a man even though he was the Son of God come from heaven. But when he came to the earth, he put off his de deity and became, he became like as a man. And he had to do this because if he had not done that, then he could not have been our substitute. Because how can a substitute be a substitute for the original? If it's not like the original. 
So Jesus had to be made like a man. He allowed himself. God allowed, uh, cre uh, done it. Only God can do that. Don't, tell, don't ask me how it was done. I don't know. All I know it was done. Because if it wasn't done, and he operated in his deity, then what he did when he says, in this world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world, then I can say to him, well, big deal, you were God when he was on the earth. Sure you overcame. How you expect me to, uh, to be of good cheer? And when you overcame and all that power you got, and you created everything, how you expect for me to be good cheer? I could say that to him. But I can't because I know that when he was on the earth, he operated as a man. He became like a man. The scripture talks about it. So, when he was on the earth, he also confessed. He made the confession of who he was. He confessed of where, uh, where he came from. And he also made confessions about his future. So, we talked about that last week, I believe. But in the book of John, the 8th chapter, verse number 23, if you turn there with me in your Bibles, I'm going to show you a few scriptures where Jesus made the confessions of, of, of confessions of where he was from and who he was. He said it with his mouth so that others can hear, but he heard it because this is what he believed because he saw it in the scriptures. I'm sorry, Facebook Live. I'm, I'm communicating to someone. <laughs> Why are they turn in the pages? I, I forgot y'all could see me. <laughs> Everybody else in there turning the pages. I'm making all these these the quiet signs. Okay, have you found the book of John, the eighth chapter? Ignore the other part, okay? Well, let's read this verse of scripture out loud in John, the eighth chapter, verse number 23. You on Facebook Live, you're looking at it too, and also YouTube and Twitter. Let's read it together. Ready, go. He said unto them, beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. So he's making a confession. Yeah, he's talking to people, but he's still making a confession. He says, he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. It's kind of akin to you telling somebody, he says, well, you're going to come to, you coming to the party? No, I'm not, I'm not going to the party because I, 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 don't, I don't party. I'm a Christian. I don't, I don't live that life I used to live before. It's like my, my cousin, I told you my story about my cousin, my, my, called my twin because we were born on the same day in the same hospital. I called my twin, twin cousin. And when I came back from overseas and I was in, in um, <clears throat> Korea and I had gotten born again in Killeen, Texas, and I came back and I was visiting family members and stuff, you know, because I used to do that when I would come home and leave in Los Angeles. And I went over to her house and stuff, you know, and uh, she was there and stuff and she had, you know, you know, on her bar and stuff, you know, and all the drinks and stuff that was there. And then she had a little box and stuff and, and she offered me some things as, you know, as her guest. You want a drink? I said, no, thank you. <coughs> well, you want a joint? That's the thing you roll up to smoke marijuana with. <laughs> I know y'all don't know about that. And I, <laughs> and I said, all right, all right, Akisha, back in. <laughs> and I said, no, thank you. She said, my, you don't do anything anymore. Well, when did, when did you stop? I said, oh, a little while ago. You know why I did that? I was ashamed at that moment. Yeah. I visited with her for a little while. <clears throat> Felt uneasy while I was there visiting with her inside. I got my car, man, man, I'm telling you, I, I just let it go. I, but I said, God, forgive me. I think I cried a little bit because I denied him before her. And I made a, I made a covenant. I'd never deny you again. So then another time I was over at the house and I was down at my mother's house. I took a picture of that. I was on my phone. I could show you the house I was in. And down the street was where, where Faye 
Woods lived. She's a pretty little girl. And I was driving my Monte Carlo, 1976. White vinyl half top, praise God, metal fake blue. <laughs> Shiny rims on the baby, bro. Shoo, bro. Had some tailor-made uh, tailor uh, jeans, suits and stuff. Had my shoes on. I'm in the car and I'm driving, you know. I'm headed over to Grandma's house. I'm saved now. And I pull by and all of a sudden I hear the voice, Rodney! And I look over to the right and stuff, you know, and there is Faye on the porch looking pretty as a, pretty as a flower boy, pretty as a, a, a Georgia peach. And I came to a stop and pulled over to the curb and she runs out to the car and she runs out for it and she puts her hands on the door and I roll the window down and she just blinked in my eye. Hey Rodney, how are you? Fine. Hey Rodney, the stylistics are going to be in town tonight and they're going to be, you want to take me? Just some words, boy. Just some words, man. I'm telling you, though. And, and I'm saying, you talking about temptation. Shoo, I had to make a confession with my mouth. I had to draw a line in the sand. You ever draw a line in the sand in the hood? Or in the dirt? You know what I'm talking about? No, baby. She, she don't know what I'm talking about. You take a little stick, man. You draw a line and stand right there to the dude that's standing over there. He said, well, you, you cross that line. Yeah, you cross that line. I don't know why we did it. You know, we were young then. We just draw a line across here. We did it with our feet. So, you know, you cross that line. You cross that line. Uh-huh. And they started talking back and forth across the line because both of us scared, you know. Well, anyway, I had, to, I had to draw a line in the, in the, in the, in the sand. What was I going to do now? They look fine. She asked me if I could take her <laughs> to the still of see the stylistics. And all of a sudden I just decided I'm gonna say, no, Faye. I said, I live for Jesus Christ now. I'm a Christian. And that spirit broke. She said, Oh. Okay. And I drove off. I was free, bro. I was free. Glory to God. I made my confession. Jesus said in the scripture right here, he says, and he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. He made a public confession. You have to do the same thing. For you have to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of your testimony. That's why you have to get the word inside of you and make this confession. You can be bold. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you need to know that because he is. God is not in a galaxy far, far away. Then when you come to church, you got to scream real loud in prayer because, you know, you got to make sure he hear you. No, you can pray softly. Because God is in you. Know you not that your body is the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you 24-7, 365 and 66 if it's a leap year. And he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. That we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man can do unto me or shall do unto me. Isn't that good to know? Amen. He's your helper, says Akeisha, all the time, 24-7. You ain't got to worry about them knowing, I ain't going to like me no more. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not looking for you. Listen, I'm looking to please my father. Yes. You liking me has no bearings. Because a lot of times you're liking me, it comes with some type of condition. As long as things, I'm doing something that's, you know, pleasing to you or what have you. You understand what I'm saying? And we have two different worlds, especially if they're not born again. Mm -hmm. The communication of our faith is affected by acknowledging the good things that's in you. Jesus made a confession. Turn to John the 16th chapter. You're in John the 16th chapter. You got John 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Get to the 16th chapter and I give you the verse. I don't have to turn because I got it typed in my paper here. But I'm going to turn anyway, so 
I can be like y'all. Oh man, I'm telling you, this word is so good. It'll set you free. All you got to do is hear it, believe it, receive it, act upon it. I'm not talking about just in church when you get out there. I mean, you got, you got, you, you got inside. The stuff you use that's inside of you, you can't lose. I mean, you got the, you got the creator of the universe that's inside of you. When you walk out these doors, you got the creator of the universe inside of you. And he's not inside of you to get a free ride because he don't need no free ride. He's in everybody, every one of us at the same time. He's in there to help you to overcome. But you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the words of your testimony about who you are in Christ. Where you are in Christ. What you have in Christ. What you can do through Christ. You have to confess this and act like this. So, in John 16, 28, let's read together. Ready, go. Jesus said, I come. Ready, go. Verse 28. Oh, I need to tell you, verse 28. I'm sorry. I told you the chapter, but not the verse. We're going to verse 28. John 16, 28. Now, verse number 28. We're there now? Okay, let's read. Ready, go. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. He was confessing this with his mouth. He knew where he came from. He also knew where he was going. Ooh, I'm telling you. Hey, I have eternal life. My confession is, when I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to be with my Father. <laughs> when I die and I leave this body, I'm going to heaven and I'm going to be with the Father. I'm going to be with God. When I die, it's not the end of it. It's not the end. It's just, it actually, praise God, if you want to call it the beginning, you can. But I'm just leaving locations. I'm going from the physical to the spiritual. Yes. Yes. Can you say amen? amen. Woo! Glory to God. Look at John. The, go back to John the 8th chapter. I'm sorry. I should have went to that first. But John the 8th chapter, verse number 12. You don't turn there. Let me just read it to you. He said, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, No, turn there. I'm sorry. Turn there. I'm going to let you see that with your own eyes. Because it's saying something a little different here. Because Jesus made a confession of where he was from and who he was. Who he was. I told Faye, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian now. Okay, in John 8 chapter, verse number 12. You there? Say amen. amen. Now, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, Say saying. Say saying. He confessed, saying, I am the light of the world. Ooh. He was confessing who he was. I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of light, a life. I am the light of the world. That's his confession because it says, Then spake Jesus again. Say again. again. So that implies he must have been saying this more than just one time. Yeah. Isn't that true? Amen. Am I right? Amen. I mean, help me now. I know I have some edge of vocation, but you know, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'm, I know I ain't wrong on this here. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, the communication of your faith becomes effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you that's in Christ Jesus. I am the light of the world, and he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He boldly said that. He boldly said that because he knew who he was. And you should boldly say what you should say about yourself. I am a new creation, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Turn to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. This should be your confession. Even on a daily basis, when you wake up in the morning, or you go to bed at night, while you're in the car driving to your destination, while you're standing in line in the grocery store or the department store, while you're on the, on, on the semi-line at work, while you're sitting at your desk in, at, your, at, in, in, at your office or your cubicle at your office, you should make this confession because it's about who you are, what you are. 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number 17. This confession enables you to be conformed to the image of the God's Son. 
to be like Christ. This is God's will for the believer. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17. Let's read that verse of scripture out loud. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man, any woman be in Christ, be born in Christ, by one spirit are we born into the body of Christ. We're born into Christ. We become one with Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Another trans uh, uh, interpreted Bible says, a new species which has never before existed. I like that. You are a new species which has never been before existed. You were once dead and trespassed in sin. You once were a sinner. You once were a child of Satan. No longer. You are a new creation. And then he says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, look at that verse of Scripture. Look at that verse of Scripture. Look at that verse of Scripture. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new, or become new. All things are become new. They is new now, not going to be. The old things have already been passed away. The old nature, you are not just a sinner. You fall down, then you get up. That's not true. No matter how beautiful the, the, the melody or the music behind it sounds, the words are absolutely a lie. I'm not telling the person. I said the words. The, the thoughts, the ideas of that stanza and that song is a lie. You are a new creation. The old nature has passed away and all things have become new. You are sons, you're daughters of God. That's who you are now. And that should be your confession. I'm a new creation. There's a song that came out. I'm a new creation. I've been born again. Old things are passed away. I'm a brand new man. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Oh, I love that song. Then that is a gospel song. Because it's according to the word. Say, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new, say, woman or man. I'm a brand new. My old life has passed away. And all things have been made new. I'm a new creation. I'm a son or daughter of God. I'm a brand new creation. I've been born again. Amen. That's for you to be your confession every day. Yes. Confess that. Yeah. Like Jesus confessed. Because you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. What are you testifying? You're affirming about who you are in Christ. You are affirming. You are reaffirming and affirming by the confession of your mouth. Can you say amen? So there's a lot more than you just come to church, praise the Lord, hallelujah. How you doing? Hey, I'm here. <laughs> hey, I like that suit you got on. Oh, yeah, man. I like the one you got on too, bro. Looking good, bro. Yeah, I like that, man. I like it too. Praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, he set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, sure preacher that. Sure did. Man, look at that food down the road out there. You see that man? Oh, yeah. Oh, whatever. 
It sounds funny, but man, I mean, it, it, it's, it's being done today. Now, I don't mean to make fun of nobody. I'm not trying to put nobody down, but I'm telling you, that is that, but this is this, and this is what God wants you to walk in the light of. So that your light can shine. So when the sinners see you, after you come out of church, they can see a difference. They can see a light. Amen, Ariana? Yeah, they can see a difference. Just because you say you're a Christian, I go to so and so's church, okay. Well, you say you're a Christian, so kick out. Take your word at it. Now you told me what you are, I'm going to be watching. Right. <laughs> and then. <laughs> Then I'm gonna go over to my. Then I'm gonna go over to my. Then I'm gonna go over to my friends. And I'm gonna talk about you. I'm gonna talk about you. Amen. Okay. Now listen. Listen. Let's go back to the scriptures now. Now I know we laugh and stuff like that, but we need to get this in our spirits and our hearts and our mind renewed to it, so we can live it. That's what I'm standing up before. Not to entertain, but to feed you the flock of God. Now in John the 14th chapter, verse six, Jesus made another confession. Jesus said unto him. In fact, go to John, the 14th chapter. Then we're going to go back to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, and we're going to look at verse number 21. But I want you to go to John, the 14th chapter, and look at verse number 6. Because Jesus had his confession, you have your confession. There are scriptures in the Bible that is your confession. You should be confessing this. Okay, I see two five fingers raised up at me. One back there and one in the front. John the 14th chapter, verse number 6, okay? If you're there, say amen. amen. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now Jesus made this confession about himself. He was telling the people. He said it out loud. Because it says, Jesus saith unto him, talking to whoever he was talking about, but anybody, anybody around him heard it also. But Jesus saith unto him, I am the way way, the truth of the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that means that you can talk to somebody individually and tell them who you are in Christ. I've done it before. I told Faye. You remember that? And countless others. Well, go to 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, verse number 21. If Jesus had to confess, if Jesus had to overcome by the word of his testimony, hey man, now, he didn't need nobody blood because when he was born, remember, he was born sinless. So he didn't have to become born again, did he? Huh? No, he already had the life of God inside of him when he was on the earth. He was made sin. We're going to see that in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It was his blood that enabled us to become born again. Now we have to be conformed. We have to go through the transformation. We have to go through the method which generally requires a number of steps that must be taken to arrive at the same result, and that is to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be not conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change the way you think. Amen? Have you found 2 Corinthians 5.21? Let's read that verse of Scripture out loud together. Ready, go. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. He made him, he made him, he made him, he made, he made him, praise God, got a little background music while we, we bringing this to the close, huh? Now notice what I said, look at that verse of scripture. It says, for he, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin, Remember I said a moment ago, Jesus was born sinless, so he didn't need no blood. All he had to, he had to use his confession, though. He had to confess who he was on the earth. It says, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in who? In him. Or in Christ. Amen? So my confession is, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am. 
the righteous of God in Christ. I am righteous. I've been made the righteous of God in Christ. Therefore, I can come to the throne of God boldly without any condemnation, any uh, inferiority. I can come boldly, because the book of uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, it says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of God, that we might receive mercy and find grace. How can you come boldly when you have sin consciousness, when you feel unworthy? You feel like you're just an old sinner saved by grace. You're just trying to make heaven your home. I'm just trying to climb up the mountain. I'm just trying to make heaven my home. I'm just so unworthy, oh Lord. I know that I'm not worthy to I come before you as humbly as I can. Head bowed down. No, you are the righteous of God. He made him to be sin who knew no sin that you might be made. Say made. made. Say I, I am, am the righteousness, the righteousness of, God of God in Christ. In Christ. Because I'm a new creation. In Christ, in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if everybody for them, therefore, if any man be in Christ, therefore, if any man be in Christ, <clears throat> you are baptized into the body of Christ. You are in Christ. You are in Christ. You are a new creation. You are born again. You have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Quit saying you're an old sinner saved by grace. But pastor, sometime I miss it. Well, join the company, praise God. You're going to miss it. You're going to get in the flesh. But your spirit, it really, it, it really con gets convicted. You, you don't feel good when you sin. That's why sometimes you, you feel all just e uneasy. I don't, I don't know what it is. I just, you know, just that's unhappy. Some Christians seem to be just unhappy. Because sometimes, a lot of times, because they've done sin and they ain't repented of sin. And their spirit, their hearts convict them. If our heart condemn us, the book of John says in 1 John, the third chapter. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, not the Holy Spirit, he convicts the world of sin. It's your spirit that condemns you, convicts you, because you sin. And the hot way you get rid of that is 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from the unrighteous acts that we do, even though you're still the righteousness of God in Christ. But you allowed your flesh to dominate you. But this is what we're doing now. We're going through the process, which is a method, which then requires a number of steps to be taken, of coming to church, to Bible study, to, to church service, and having your mind renewed with the word of God. Submitting yourself to a shepherd, a pastor, who will feed you, teach you, lead you into green pastures, besides still waters. Causing your soul to be restored, to be made whole again. So that when you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, you fear no evil. For you know that his rod and his staff, they comfort you. And that he's anointed your head with all and that your cup runneth over. Because you're being filled with the word of God. Your faith is being fed. Can you say amen? amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad I came to church this morning. I am preached myself happy. I don't know about you. I know your heart's been edified. Those of you on Facebook Live, those of you on the YouTube in the near future, and those of you on, on Twitter that are watching this right now, I know your hearts have been edified. I know that your hearts has been touched. And some of you, your hearts are just being pulled at right now by God's Spirit because it's revealing that void that's on the inside of you. It's revealing that missing piece that's on the inside of you. It's just somehow you just know that there has to be more to life than what you've been living. And there is. That's why John 3.16, the Bible tells us how God sent his only begotten son into this world that through his son, the world might be saved. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. 
another scripture in the Romans, the fifth chapter says, it says that God commended his love towards man, towards us, that while we were yet sinners, his son Christ Jesus died for the ungodly. He paid the price because of what Adam caused us to be born into this world with, and that is with a sinful nature. It was because of one man's sin that we were all born into this world as sinners. And that's why Jesus says you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Being born by his spirit, but this being born by his spirit is by believing that his son Jesus Christ paid the penalty for sin when he was crucified on the cross. He died and he went to a place in the middle of the earth called Sheol, a place of torment. And there he was for three days and three nights. When justice had been paid, when the penalty of Adam and Eve's sin had been paid, God raised him from the dead. You see, he did that not for his sins. He did it because of your sins, our sins. Now you have to accept what he did like we did, I did, and many others. You have to accept what Jesus Christ did for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Therefore the, therefore, the Bible says in John 1, 12, but as many as received him or received what he did for them, to them gave he power or the right to become sons or daughters of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10 tells you how to do it this way. He said that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart, you believe unto righteousness. With your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You go from here to over here by what you believe in your heart. We call it the great confession. That's what Christianity is called. Because you confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. Where you become born again. And then you become born as a Christian Christ-like. I want to lead you into a prayer. I want you to pray this prayer not just to ape and imitate me. As I lead you into a prayer, I want you to pray these words because you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he came to the world, came into this world, was born of the Virgin, and was crucified on the cross, and that he died and that he was buried in the earth for three days and three nights to pay the penalty of Adam and Eve's transgression. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. If you believe it in your heart, and you confess that to the Father, with your mouth, you'll receive the gift of eternal life. So I want you to bow your heads and I want you to pray this prayer with me. Because you believe this. And you want to fill that empty void. You want to receive that missing puzzle in your life. Well, it's Jesus. It's eternal life. You must be born again. So with your head bowed and your eye closed, nothing spiritual about bowing your head and closing your eyes. It only enables you to concentrate on, concentrate on God alone because that's where your salvation is coming from. It's not coming from men. So bow your head and close your eyes. You believers are here. Pray along with us to encourage them. Those of you on Facebook Live, if there's a Christian next to that person, pray aloud with them to encourage that person that's praying now for the first time. Say these words with me. Say, Dear God, I come to you now. Just as, I am, just as I am a sinner, a sinner. I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, your son, is your son that he came to the earth, to the earth was, born was born of the flesh and I believe, and I believe that, he was crucified on the cross that he was crucified on the cross for sin, for sin and, that died, and that he died and went into the belly of the earth, the of the earth for three days, three days and three nights for sin. for sin. And I believe, and I believe that, on day, that on the third day that you raised him from the dead, from the dead so, I so I could be saved. I accept, I accept what, Jesus what Jesus Christ did for me. For me. I, confess Jesus Christ I confess Jesus Christ and accept Jesus Christ, and accept Jesus Christ as, my Lord as my Lord and my Savior. And, my Savior. and because I believe this in my heart, and I've confessed with my mouth I am born again I'm a son of God a daughter of God thank you Jesus thank you Heavenly Father 
for saving me. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. The reason why we're so enthusiastic and just celebrating by the clapping of our hands is because the Bible says the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who has been born again, who has repented. Well, we just crashed the party in heaven on your behalf. Listen, I have a free gift in my hand called the new birth. We want to get into your hand free of charge. All you got to do is call the telephone number at the end of this broadcast. That telephone number that's coming up on the screen right now is 810-515-1286. Call that number. Well, now we have some people standing by the phones. They can answer the phone. We'll get your name, your address, so that we can send this book to you, as well as for information about Abiding Faith Christian Center, where we're located. Because if you just got born again and you're in the geographical location here now, then you can come on down and become a member of Abiding Faith Christian Center because you do need a pastor to shepherd you, to feed you, so that you can grow as a newborn babe in Christ. Amen. And so we recommend them this. And if God leads you someplace else, then you need to go there so you can get up on the pastor so that he can shepherd you and feed you the word of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, this lovely, lovely woman coming up here now is none other than my, my wife, Pastor Patricia Hamer. We're the pastor of the Abiding Faith Christian Center family, this wonderful family of believers who are joined together to fulfill God's will. We want to remind you that the book of John, the 15th chapter, verse number 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. God bless you and we'll see you real soon. <laughs>